Hello, in this tutorial I will give you a short introduction into embedded 3D programming using a Raspberry Pi. 3D on embedded is really complex. It is a little bit more complex than 3D on desktop, but the only thing that is more complex is the initialization steps. So let's start. I have this uh, small test program written from mostly examples that I copied together and yeah just look at this yeah colored triangle on the screen and this is completely hardware rendered and yeah let's see how it is done at first we take a look into the make file at first we have to add some include paths like the opt vc include which is uh, the folder where the OpenGL ES graphics driver is. If you enable the experimental Raspberry Pi OpenGL driver, you have to use other paths. We have two input files, EGL RPI and ortho, and we create a file ortho from it. Let's take a look into these two files. These are two C++ style uh, files in yeah, re really hacked manner. So I didn't clean up anything. I just copied together code such that it works and to show you how it, uh, just to show you how it works. Let's directly jump into the main routine. So, to explain what happens here is at first we have to create the 3D context. The context is yeah like a connection to the driver that, se uh, that tells the GPU uh, on which window you are rendering or if you are full screen or anything. And yeah, then we have a shader. A shader is um, is a uh, also called a pixel program uh, or yeah uh, the shader is the program that is run on the GPU and that draws the pixels and then we have a projection the transform matrix which will yeah show us the perspective and now these are the variables and now the code begins at first we create the context then we create the full screen window. Then we set the clear color to a kind of dark gray and tell the tell JLS to clear both color and depth buffer. And then we create our shader which will do the color interpolation and we will bind this shader to the shader unit and we will calculate an ortho perspective so uh, an ortho perspective is uh, where you have a lot of rectangular where you have everything rectangular and not perspective then we load this ortho um, projection matrix to the GPU bound to the shader and then we have to create our yeah, identity matrix for the transform matrix and upload it also to the GPU. And then we create a vertex buffer that holds the three edges of our triangle. And we upload this. So we have ex uh, especially two buffers, one with the vertex positions and one with the vertex colors. Then we bind this um, vertex array um, to the to these um, to these um, vertex attributes. Then we clear our yeah render buffer and we draw these triangles. And last but not least, we swap the buffers and ta-da, it is on the screen. 
then we wait for some uh, entered line and quit the program to see it again. This is the final result. Now take a look how it works in depth. Uh, we have we have two things. We we'll, we are using two libraries. We need two libraries in order to have a proper working GLES. The first is the EGL library, which means yeah embedded graphics library. It basically is the library that either gets us the full screen or binds to a window of uh, of the windowing system, so that we have our yeah our display buffer. So this class yeah has the calls to the EG uh, this class uh, encapsulates the functionality and this um, calls some functions to the EGL library. Let's look into the constructor. Yeah. And yeah. Finally, some functions. Here, the create window function is the main part of this EGL Raspberry Pi um, uh, yeah, source file. Um, we have to create an EGL config um, object. We have to store some values to it. Yeah, we have to calculate our window size and so on. We have to first EGL initialize, then we have to choose our config. The config uh, contains things like how many bits uh, the red pixel has, how many bits the uh, green pixel has, how many bits the blue pixel has. We have, after this con uh, config, we have chosen the config, we can create the context, and the context is actually the link to uh, the graphics driver. Yeah, and always when this context is active, we can render it to our screen. So EGL is is not only for drawing on the screen; it can also be used for hardware accelerated back buffers. So, for instance, you can. Uh, also render hardware accelerated um, images into a video for instance which is especially interesting because the Raspberry Pi has a hardware based uh, video encoder so you can yeah do do fancy uh, EGL things and uh, via hardware and can put it via hardware into a H264 video and this all faster than real time yeah after we have the context we have to create the window surface which is our surface so our buffer where we render to and we have to make this context current and that's it for the EGL library this is all done in the EGL context creation uh, create window, yeah. Now we have our uh, GLES state. So we are finished with EGL now. We have a window we can draw to. Next is we have to... Yeah, uh, we have to draw something. And before we can draw, we need a triangle that we can draw. So we need the vertices and the colors of this triangle and also an algorithm how to... Uh, yeah, how the color looks and how the vertices are transformed. And yeah, here in this constant you see uh, some of the EGL constants. I forgot to show you. Now to the OpenGL part. Um, let's look at the shaders first. Um, a shader set in, in GLES2 is uh, consists basically of two shaders, the vertex and the fragment shader. OpenGL 3 and 4 and so on have more shaders like the tessellation shader and the geometry shader and some other shaders, uh, also compute shaders and so on.
that can do much more, but this are, these are the basics, the shader basics, the vertex shader uh, is in the vertex pipeline, so it processes the vertices. So what happens here is that the position of each vertex of the triangles are yeah, finally calculated. And the fragment shader uh, for each pixel, for each fragment on the screen or on, on the, the back buffer, you can calculate the color. So we have at first um, this precision clause which just tells you how precise the floats shall be. Then we have the two matrices, the projection and the transformation matrix um, as, the, as a uniform. A uniform is a kind of variable that shares, uh, that, that, yeah, that you can write to from your application and that is then uploaded to the graphics card so you can use it in either the vertex or the fragment shader or both if you need. Then we have the attribute Attributes are different. Attributes are, uh, yeah, are properties of a vertex. So you can define if a vertex has only a position, or if it has both position and color, or if it has position and vertex uh, attribute, or if it has position, vertex, uh, uh, texture, coordinates, and color so we can have so so in OpenGL these attributes are kind of predefined so you always have a position and always have a color and always have a texture coordinate. Um, OpenGL ES is more general it only has these attributes and you can define on your own if you even have a position or if you just uh, calculate the position in the vertex shader. Here we upload our vertex position to the GPU and also the color per vertex. Yeah, and then we have a varying. Varyings are uh, kind of special variables that are shared between the vertex shader and the fragment shader. So a varying is set in the vertex shader and then interpolated uh, in the fragmentation process. So you can write in uh, the, to this varying in the vertex shader and read out the value interpolated in the um, fragment shader. And especially we use this for the color. So we have really interpolated colors on the screen. So the code is really simple of this vertex shader. Just creates uh, calculates the position from projection multiplied with transform multiplied with position. Projection is our projection matrix, transform is our transform matrix, and position is yeah our vertex attribute. And the varying call is set to color. Um, some details to projection transformation matrix. The projection matrix is, is uh, describes a transformation in which direction you look. So it describes your position of view, your, where your eye is, and into which direction you are looking. The transformation matrix you can set uh, to the position and the rotation and the scaling where your object actually is in the world. So this is the world view. And this is yeah the eye view. To the fragment shader, it just also declares the precision, has also the declaration of color, this color, uh, and it only has one line in this code. It sets the fragment color to color. Now uh, we have to now we have to yeah set this projection matrix this transform matrix and add for each vertex these coordinates. So let's take a look uh, let's take a look at yeah the the two matrices. This is the ortho matrix. Uh, yeah 
what the metrics is would be too much time to explain but just yeah just <laughs> remember that it's a transformation and the vertex attributes are much more interesting we have these vertices so at minus 5 minus 5 0 to which is yeah bottom left here then to 5 minus 5 0 is the bottom right point and 0 5 0 is the top middle point the colors are yeah red green and blue and yeah let's take a look if it really does so so we have the red in the left bottom the green in the right bottom and blue in the middle top so everything works back to the code now what we did is we uploaded our view our eye view to the uh, to the gpu we uploaded the position the the world position the transform uh, matrix of the triangle to the gpu and we uploaded the geometry of the triangle to the gpu we uh, bound these buffers to the to the state so so um, OpenGL is very state based. You have you have uh, yeah some kind of memory in the library which texture you just bound, which shader you just use, which vertex attribute you just bound, and so you so you have so you change your uh, things only when they really change. The problem with this state is that they are not that the state is not really uh, does not really reflect how a GPU works. So when you look at the newer Vulkan API, uh, you have everything stateless. So you so every time you uh, draw a triangle, you have to upload. Uh, yeah, you have to set the projection matrix and the transform matrix each time. It looks uh, inefficient for the first time, but when you take a closer look, you see. Uh, when there's no state in between, you can do everything in parallel. So when so Vulkan is much more efficient in its API design. Um, by the way, modern GPUs are built like the Vulkan API, but uh, so so when you write an OpenGL driver, you always have to translate state changes into a fixed state and then upload the complete state to the GPU. So this means you have a lot of CPU overhead with OpenGL drivers. Same uh, is true for DirectX, so Volker is really the better API. Now after we bound everything, so we have bound the shader, we have bound the vertex buffers, we have bound our uh, vertex attributes, then we have this GL draw arrays and this really uh, tells the GPU to take out three vertices of the vertex buffer and interpret them as triangles, so it draws one triangle. And after swap buffers, this is visible on the screen. I think that's, mm, that's enough background for 3D graphics card programming. I hope you like it. And yeah, give me some feedback if you like this uh, very detailed uh, information about 3D drivers and 3D programming or if you like uh, it's more in the way of showcases and understanding uh, and not so much understanding. So just give me some feedback.